in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. If you believe it's true, baby, won't you let the light
walking along I feel the rain crashing down All around this empty town I'm searching for the lost and found But you don't care, you're unaware Keep moving like the scars aren't even there It's in the air like a blazing flare Okay, welcome to Collegian R6, the playoff match for UWW versus Akron. Um, just going through this in general, Akron is definitely a favorite here, but UWW should be able to put up a fight. Yeah, honestly, I'd like to see how both these teams, like, just, like, what map, like, the map bands already look crazy enough to me, but, like, the defender bands and the attacker bands are going to look a, a little bit different, probably. Yeah, so just talking through the bands here, Consulate coming up first, and then Coastline followed by the first bands for Akron and UWW, respectively. Consulate, a map, Akron, and not a lot of teams generally like to play. Very uh, not strat heavy, I guess you could say. A lot of just window game. Uh, Coastline coming out of Wisconsin Whitewater. That's one of Akron's best map. Very easy to see here. Map picks coming out were Villa and Oregon. Very interesting for UW to pick into Oregon. Generally a good map for all teams. Very well-rounded map, I would say. One of the most balanced, I believe. Uh, Villa also coming out. Another strat-heavy map. Probably will be a good pick in for Akron. I'm sure they have a lot of strats over there. Yeah, and the decider is going to be Clubhouse if uh, if we ever happen to go there. Uh, I Honestly, I would just love to see like how these guys play on Villa in Oregon, to be completely honest. I don't know if they're going to go... like. A bunch of like roam heavy operators if they go on defensive side or if they're going to try to hunker down on site. Yeah, I think Villa is going to be an interesting map for both teams since uh, UWW has some creative strats, and I'd love to see what Akron brings to the table for this since it was their map pick. Uh, I think Villa will be really defender sided, and we'll get to see a lot of some crazy strats come out on Villa defender side. Oregon's a bit more of a toss up. I don't really think I've seen UWW or Akron play Oregon that much. I'm um, imagining they're also going to be pretty strat heavy on there. Uh, Oregon's usually one of the maps where the two sites are typically more free, but also attacked a lot more. So attack and defense has gotten really creative on Oregon now for how they want to attack or defend those sites. Yeah, I'm just... It looks like we're about to go straight into the match right here. <laughs> All right. UWW is, is on defensive first because Akron's map pick. Let's see what the bans are. So typical bans on Oregon, or not Oregon, Villa, I would say, is one of the hard breaches simply because uh, forcing a Thermite in any situation is good, but with Habana and Ace both being up, that's also viable. The impact tricks are very strong on this map, so having somebody forced to get close to a wall or any device that's easily destroyed is always a plus for the defenders. Uh, Thatcher ban coming out though from UWW, also a very standard ban, makes the hard walls harder to grab, forces the team to either nade over the wall or go under. Clearing under though in Villa is not very uncommon, so we should see plenty of that. Then the Jacko band coming out of Akron, so all of the hard breaches will stay up here. I think that's very interesting to see all four hard breaches up on this map. Yeah, I definitely think that Ace will be brought a lot here. Maybe maybe the Habana as well. Mira band, kind of somewhat standard on Villa, I'd say, because Mira is such a versatile operator just in any sense of the term. But honestly, like this no, this no... Uh... No hard breach ban is definitely it's definitely going to be a uh, definitely going to be a wild one. Yeah, gives the attackers a lot of opportunity to open up a lot of walls. 
Uh, typically on Villa though, there's only a couple ways that you want to attack a site. So seeing how they utilize the hard breach will be interesting and how they roam clear as well. With that Valk ban coming through, a lot of the info is going to be off the board. So that only relies on Maestro Cam since Echo is still banned in this play in this play day. So Maestro will be the key info gatherer here if they will even bring him at all. Yeah, and to be completely honest with the uh, with the metas that's been going across the uh, with, that's been going across Siege at this point in time, like with just higher up play, uh, IQ's not really brought out as often. So Valkyrie is probably one of those like necessary bans if you guys want to be able to mostly do anything. Um, so we just see one hard breach on the side of, um, on the attacker side here, and it's just the Attackers Ace. Obviously Ace has the AK-12, which is one of the strongest guns in the game, statistically, and, you know, but, and obviously he can throw his charges so he's safe on the balcony if he decides to do so, but, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it's gonna be, it's definitely going to be a wild one. Yeah, I feel like that's a big thing on Villa, just not getting C4. Having the option to play Habana or Ace is really nice on this map, not having to step foot inside since most of Villa is soft destruction and a lot of it's able to be played under easily. This site not so much, but definitely on the other site, Trophy, where they can roam below and easily get a C4 up there to stop any hard breach. So having that throwable gadget is just so much more useful. Yeah, and um, just seeing just seeing the defender picks here of the Wamai and Jaeger obviously playing into the, the utility burn meta that I've spoken about previously, but also the bandit for denial and smoke and then uh, and Maestro. So as you talked before, Maestro is definitely going to be probably brought almost every single round because, you know, his cameras bring so much like versatility to them and also because the laser on his camera can destroy any type of breach. Uh, they're gonna do a master side push here. They're gonna they're gonna be taking yeah. the master side. This master side is also going really quick. They're already deep in with only forty seconds spent so far. Really, no contestion on the other side. Yeah, it seems like and they've already gotten statue side and trophy. So they're gonna be probably and be pushing ninety. It looks like as well because yeah. there is nobody in ninety and yet is sitting on the window here. There is the shield that they're going to have to deal with, and the Maestro Cam will be blown up there as well. Uh, Boomin is still on the roam, so we might have opportunity to do the link play later in the round. Imad is already in 90, and obviously he's going to be shown up by the shield here, but he, he should be able to just get that done quickly. Sacrificed any ADSs to be put here. Um, Parker taking a bit of a damage here on the smoke and booming with the Attackers flank. The now, obviously, he used the Nomad Attackers charge that's on the, the, bomb that's on the uh, stairs. Sarma, but... Knowing somebody is there, though, that's pretty clear. He's sitting here waiting for the peak to come through. It should be a free kill. Yeah. And there's the free kill out of Serma, clearly having some kind of flank drone or information there. Already looking before the Nomad charge was even shot. Yeah, I'm at taking a bit of damage there. But um, other than that, it's seeming pretty, uh, pretty stacked for the attacker side at the moment. But uh, obviously they're gonna keep on fighting. And then five left. Oh, they pushed. They held on to study for this time. Now obviously it's gonna be Kaifer doing. Yeah, this is a typical play though from the defenders when um the other team decides to take from master. Try to hold in study a little bit longer. But Jet going over there and trying to cause some disruption, making sure that guy can't stop the vault door plant. That should be coming out quickly here. And Kaifer's gonna drop over to study and give them control of that if they actually uh, see him out to that. But Kaifer with yeah. the one smoke's coming out. Smoke using his utility. And it's traded. And just continuous trades here. 3v2. Vault plant is going down though behind maps. Maestro might be able to stop it getting pings. Attack All down to the user. smoke now. Still stuck inside a bar. And we'll get fragged from behind. Um, one thing about that round that I was noticing is that calls seem to come kind of late. A lot of the info, like the vault wall being open and the smoke just clearly having his back turned there to the person who just died, is something that maybe comms were a little bit too loud or too flustered. Maybe not have been able to get all the info out that they wanted. 
Uh, very clean take though by Akron. Very fast, very decisive, I would say. Even though it was back and forth at some point with all the trades, it looked like they were at full control the entire round. Yeah, and honestly, that immediate entry just straight into Master and taking like Trophy and Statuary side was just almost perfect. Like, they knew that nobody was up there. They saw it, They and they took it, obviously, you know? Um, and they just read into the flank from uh, from the from Whitewater side. So, honestly, it's I'm kind of kind of hoping to see if any more flanks would come out, or they or if they're gonna stick onto site more. Because now that they the know, like, hey, the nomads being brought as you know, as they can. and it's being stuck, then uh, maybe they'll think twice about trying to flank. Yeah, uh, the nomad was a big factor there as well. I think. Buin was forced to slow down on his flank. Uh, I will mention this again though, Serma clearly had info on him because even before, whether that was audio or drone, uh, Serma had some kind of info on him to turn around before the bandit was even all the way up the stairs to shoot that uh, Nomad charge. So... Yeah, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure Boomin knew that someone was going to be able to, or going to be on flank watch, even though the Nomad charge was there, because, um, obviously, you know, it's easy, it's easy to be shot, and other people have done it before. This is, this is, uh, different than what I normally see. They've opened up the bottom of bar, and it seems like they're gonna try to impact trick the main wall. Yeah, this is an interesting setup. Normally, on this type of setup, some teams opt to open up the wall leading into Vault from Aviator. But with the bar wall open, it makes it a little bit harder to sit inside a bar, which is normally your main anchor point, so... Yeah, and booming below... He's got a press nitro. Aw, oh, nothing on that, because... Wait, what? Mm -hmm. it, seems, it seems like they knew that somebody was going to... Be doing some sort of sneaky play on that side. Yeah. Rick's out of there. They take the initial gunfight. Bob Spider loses 75 his HP, but only dealing 25 to IMAT. Still sitting top red. Oh, Tennessee and with the Spider is hit. gone. Yeah. So that's the guy playing red. Once again, uh, UWW opting to really just give up the Astro side of the map. Not Taking 90 once again, somebody is already in 90, that looks to be Tennessee. Nade will come out onto the shield, do a little bit of damage to Parker there. I'm wondering if they're going to take bar side here. Or, um, or for vault. Because it seems like, it seems like there's... You know, Reload! Well, yeah, I... my guess is a nade is going to come over, but there is no nade. And my head just cleans up two people getting the double kill there. Setting Ripple to 1 HP as well. Hennessy gets that refrag. All up to the smoke once again. Yeah, it seems like it seems like Akron is definitely good at getting these early picks and keeping it to their one side. Um, smoke is obviously going to use his utility up here, but at a minute, it's, it's kind of looking a bit grim for him. But, you know, anything's winnable yeah. in a sense. Plenty of time. Plant starts going down. The flank coming out, I don't know if they have a drone for this, they might, oh they did, okay. It was on 90 So, yeah, now the smoke's just in a really tough position, plant's already down, not a lot to do, and Jack Khan will clean up that kill. Um, if UWW wants to go here again, I want to see some form of extension, clearly just turtling up is not working in their favor, just giving Akron way too much ground to get a foothold in. Yeah, definitely the aggressive play from the Jaeger. Um, on top red at the beginning was um, was somewhat the play that they needed. I think I think they need to get a little bit like more aggressive towards like extending in a sense because they're just they're just getting picked off like easily on this turtle. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, Spider and Boomin are both on the roam right now, but Boomin is all the way downstairs, isolated by himself, and Spider is isolated on red stairs. Uh, to play against the way that Akron is playing right now, they need to play together and really be able to shut down some of that drone work and some of that take coming in from the master side on that side. But now uh, the take might change, it might not, as they move over to trophy side. Yeah, they're, they're extending all the way into um, aviator side. As, uh, as we saw. And they're holing on to coat closet. Yeah, which is very... 
I, I've seen this before with, with some other with some other teams. I'm pretty sure, but definitely not to this extent, like this kind of extension. Ten seconds to insertion. Uh, they have yeah. rotates. They have rotates into bar and to 90, so Five I guess so that uh, whoever's playing here can get out easily. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb. Uh, I like the adjustment though, Attackers bringing the Mozzie here. I think that's definitely a good pick. A lot of drone work coming out of Akron so far, which allows their entries like I'm at to get in really fast into the building. Hennessy and I'm at have really just been running in with no contestant and with those drones right behind them, it's really hard to stop down that information coming in. Uh, the Mozzie will slow that down a little bit, if not uh, stop it completely. So, and obviously this 90 take is going to is going to keep on coming to fruition. They're taking from study side this time. You see the Meister cam, obviously. Um, now I'm wondering how I'm actually just going to push straight towards classic hall. Immediately try to contest that. Meister cam on that side. I wonder if this Jaeger is going to peek him from 90 side. Or is he just going to hold? Yeah, so it looks like the Jaeger is just holding passive for now, but he's going to get pinched really soon if he is not careful. Uh, gets the first pick on the Ash. Down tendency as well, gets to the 3 day. Nice play off of here. Uh, hopefully he can get out, but it looks like he might get pinched here. He's got to play this really carefully. Aww. And yeah, he will get pinched out eventually. But doing his job there really, slowing down the take really heavily. But Serma picks up the double kill, equalizes here in a 3v3 now. Yeah, they definitely they definitely should have uh, somewhat tried to fall back a tad. Because I feel like the aggression from the Mozzie was not necessary. Definitely, like, lying down in a uh, vault Bomb was not necessary. By but Serma able to get up the two pags, make it even again, so... A bomb has been located. Are just looking for any kind of information, any picks. More drones going out here. This Maestro Cam is going to be a problem though. Depending on where Jet is, it might be hard for them to clear it here. I think he is normally taking it to the other side, so he might be situated by Master Pack right now, but it does not look like it. Yeah, Maestro Cam will go down, so all three are on that side of the map. Uh, Boomin's still in closet from the looks of it, but he should be rotating out soon to help his team. It seems like they're trying to push for statue side just straight all together. Yeah, Boomin's still in closet. I think he's just waiting for the uh, waiting for the push into statue. Maybe, yeah, maybe. they should know where they're all at. <laughs> Ripple gets a nice pick shot. through his holes. Cover your ears. Move out. Sophia says, try to see if drop the bomb the Ripple with the nice shot. Through Another the nice shot. See if he could get the break. Their diffuser. And Ripple does get the 3k. Um, a lot better coming out of UWW there, but a lot of heroics, I would say. A 2k out of Spider and a 3k out of Ripple. Uh, honestly, uh, the way Akron is attacking right now, with the opposite side takes instead of the traditional takes, is very interesting, and it's causing a lot of pressure to go onto um, UWW's takes and how they want to hold it, so... Yeah, definitely Spider was, um, I feel like he needed to, I feel like it's necessary to try to take down some of the, uh, main fraggers on Akron's side to, um, yeah. try to spur it into the, into UWW's favor, I'd say. But it's definitely, it's definitely going to be, uh, they definitely need to do something else other than heroics, I would say. Yeah, that aggression was definitely good there. Shutting down Imat and Hennessy, both the two people who have generally been entry fragging here. Getting into Master really quick and getting into that 90 really quick as well. Just walking up with no fear. But now they're going back to the site that they have lost twice so far. And it looks like the same setup, so... I don't know if they're planning on adjusting to this Master site take, which has been really killing them every round. But hopefully there will be some adjustment. It looks like there is with Boomin reinforcing towards the master side already. Yeah, they definitely yeah, they definitely do need to do some sort of extension or aggressive type playstyle because I feel like that would definitely give them the edge that they need. Left. Uh, seeing how the last round went and that aggression that helped them out with the Five Jaeger on ninety. But uh, I'd like to. I definitely like to see how this how this round plays out. Just because, um, just because the the master side is now reinforced to see how they how they switch it up. Device 
Yeah, one thing I also want to mention is that I'm really impressed by UWW coming into this game because they have shown three separate strats for this site so far. So obviously an extensive knowledge on this map, maybe knowing that they would end up here, but pulling out multiple things, maybe it's just the shot calling, but these setups seem pretty complex for just shot calling. Oh my god, what a shot coming out of Spidey. Taking down Matt right away. But this master control is coming in really quick once again, just kind of jumping in. Down the down Surma. So the Nomad, if not confirmed, will still be extremely low. Spider just doing a lot of damage over here. Spider with the amazing shot. Just, just... Spider's gonna get more aggressive. He's gonna start to get open. Do they know he's here? He gets the 2k. Almost go down. Almost gets the ace as well, but ace will survive. Bandit's still over here though, and now it's down to the 2v4. Yeah, Boomin now doing the aggressive play, pushing back to where the Jaeger was. Here's the big on the Jetcon. Arv now with only 5 HP left, sitting in statuary. The 1v3. Bomb located by attackers. There's a prone, but cannot get the kill. Kyper will pick up that one. Again, just really impressive shots coming out of Spider there to get that. A good read on the situation as well, being able to get aggressive there, pick up that kill onto the Nomad, and then also put the Ace down to pretty low HP as well. Honestly, this initial pick from Spider was just completely nasty, I, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, that was devastating. To get a pick that early on on the attack typically spells doom for the attackers. Now it seems like they're going to the dining side. I think they're completely done with uh, planes for right now. Um, the castle pick, the castle pick is one of kind of kind of shows that they're going to the bottom floor. Um, but I, I'd yeah. like to see what. They change on the initial, on the normal can. strategies for this site. Uh, I like them showing the castle here as well, because a lot of teams that end up going to uh, the other site, library, usually end up bringing that castle for the piano hold. So this might throw them off a little bit, maybe thinking that they might be attacking a living room library. But hopefully the hold here comes out for above but it doesn't look like there's a lot of vertical play that can happen out of the Akron side actually none except for the Zofia and Ash bringing no breach charges here so it'll be interesting to see how Akron decides how they're going to take this yeah they're definitely going to be uh needing to use that utility sparingly if they're going to be doing a uh a vertical take but I feel like I feel like that was that would be probably one of the uh one of the best. I'm at gonna go over to study side and uh, the rest of the team is gonna be pushing towards towards uh, master. Yeah, just pinching out here. Um, one thing that's hard about this site without the hard breach is that there's so many angles that the defenders can sit on that are really free without that vertical play. So, generally having to deal with all these castles alongside the vertical play might be tough for Akron, especially since they are opting to go for the above play and lodge out these defenders up here. Kaifer seems to be the only one that's sitting in statue, and then they've got one roaming all the way over next to, uh, next to Aviator side. Not getting really aggressive, losing the one though. Kaifer picking up that kill. Uh, I think Jet is also over there on that 90 window repel. Reloading. Jet jumping in now, seeing if he can get aggressive towards this Mozzie. Right there. Now, Mozzie should have heard the cam get shot, but does not. Jet picking up a free one there. There should be somebody else upstairs. No, it looked like he chose to leave. So, Akron now has upstairs control, but with I'm at dead, it's Jet's... Jet's um, Blast that they have to open up the floor. But Arv gets the second pick onto the guy sitting in Memo. Amazing, amazing initials from, uh, from Akron here. A few shots through the floor for the Yana. And Boomin on the flank. I wonder if he's going to get aggressive here or if he's going to decide to just stick this angle, seeing if anybody's pushing from below. 
The Nomad is still up. I don't know if Yet knows about Bandit here. He does not. Bandit will almost whiff, but finally picks up the kill onto Yet. Equalizing back at a 3v3. And again, that's both their soft breach down, so getting vertical play will be hard. If UWW just bunkers up, they might have this one for free. Yeah, getting rid of the vertical play is definitely probably one of the better sides towards it, but they're going to be starting to push for longer now since the vertical play is... Uh, they can't really do it. Ripple behind the bomb. Getting a little bit aggressive towards it. A lot of damage onto the Nomad, but can't get the kill. Actually, only 75. They walked into sight, taking damage, but lose the one. Down to the 2v1 now, just the one up. And, well, very impressive from Boomin again. The UWW getting that win. Um, Riffle downed somebody there. I'm not sure who he downed. Probably the ace, that would be my guess. But yeah. Boomin cleans it up with a clean 2k at the end as well. Just well played from UWW there, honestly. I feel like I feel like definitely uh, Aviator is not uh, UWW site. Definitely not to take a against Akron, Akron, because uh, they've won both of the other sites that they've gone on to. So yeah. Uh, one thing coming out of Akron is that they have not changed this attacker lineup. Obviously comfortable with it, but. Um, on that side, I saw no breaching charges. There was a claymore on Zof, which I think is a bit redundant considering you're already bringing the Nomad. And just Defenders no vertical play able to come out there. It allowed attackers. the castle to sit behind that little table for free. And it just enables a lot of spots on that site without having that vertical pressure. Yeah, and UWW opting to go to Trophy Statuary instead of, uh, instead of uh, Aviator and that side again because they they want this side. you know they're, they're obviously going to choose this side over the site that they lost a few times over that end aviator is locked right now so it would be hard for them to go to a lock site it's fair. five seconds left <laughs> Uh, judging by drone positioning again, it looks like it'll be the same take from study side, trying to pinch out these two players over here. Boomin with the same shield and master, uh, don't fix what's not broken, I guess. Yeah, I think they're just gonna opt to do the same exact hold, you know, because, as you said, it's not, what, it's nothing's broken, I'll fix it. I think they're pushing more towards more towards uh study door this time instead of just down 90. i think they, they know that the jaeger's gonna be playing here so that's good knowledge to have with the yana jaeger sitting in the same spot it worked last time but because of the mozzie pass i believe seeing him in the same spot again might be troublesome for him to decide to stick around considering they do have the nades and the info And as you can tell, Ash is definitely going to be trying to contest this Mozzie that's there, but doesn't know if there's any other contestant from uh, from Vault side. She's the Mozzie, doesn't is not able to uh, flick and get the pick, but <laughs> nice thing to try to bait out the shots. <laughs> and still gets a kill, Kaifer still gets a kill here. Hennessy pushes in for the roof frag and gets it. This Jaeger is still up 90 though. Looking for the Yon, trying to punish. Gets a glimpse of her shoulder, I believe, there, but... Yana pushing close, Jaeger opting to just run away, save his life, keep the 44. Smart play by the Jaeger there, I think, uh, not keeping up the aggression and deciding to know, now is my time to leave. Yeah. And Arv's trying to contest Boomin here in the closet. Um, and obviously Boomin's got those ADSs and his Wamai Magnets and his shield, so it's definitely going to be harder to push him out. I think someone's rotating around to try to help him out with that. Jaeger on the aggressive angle for what I call boar. Yeah, and they're just doing a two slit here by Akron, hoping to push out Boomin here and then go for this statue plant. Uh, he does get eyes on the person crossing spider here on the Jaeger. Boomin looks like he's getting pushed really heavily. They might just try to hop in and try to frag him here. They're running very low on time, so they really need to start making plays. Rippled gets a pick onto uh, onto the Nomad, which is those 
Yeah, it's and Hennessy is also downed right now, so it's just these two master side players. 20 seconds left, Arvis forces jump in, loses the fight to the Wamai, all onto the Sophia now. Same angle, and loses it as well to Boonin. Well played by Boonin there in the closet. Really delaying for a long time. Arv not able to do much by himself on the ace, and when Zofia came over, he's just a bit too late. Yeah, definitely a good job with the uh, whole closet hole thing. I feel like I feel like the extensions are definitely what uh, helped out UWW there with uh, winning those rounds. Yeah, those extensions are able to slow down Akron a lot, and clearly the Mozzie helping as well. I think he hacked two drones that round. So very well played uh, drone placements there by the Mozzie to enable the drone work to stop and just allow the Ash to be forced to push in blind. Uh, allowed the Mozzie to get the first kill, Hennessy did get the refrag, but uh, that's well played. It just slows down the droning a lot, especially when they split like that. It's hard for them to get all the information that they need. Now Akron, Akron Attackers need to locate and as many uh, switches over can. to the defensive side, and they're going to opt to go aviate games. It seems like they're they're opting to play more into Malusi than uh, than UWW. Yeah, Malusi definitely a good operator, very good at slowing people down. It's like having three sets of barbed wire, except better, I would say. Uh, Malusi's gadget's very impressive and very good. So seeing her come out on a map like Villa now should be useful to see where they put their gadgets. There's a lot of good spots on this map for her, I believe. So. Yeah, Smoke gonna put a shield onto so she's definitely gonna give them the edge on if they try to the moving out to locate a bomb and Now they don't they don't opt to do the um the double the Wamai and the Jaeger for the Attackers neighbor. have dropped the bomb diffuser. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. Which I see as uh as definitely definitely a different thing. But you know, yeah. not, not a well, typically though, a mag comes out when you're holding main, and it looks like Akron chooses to give up main and extend over towards his master side instead. Yeah, you didn't drone bat, drone out. Swapping mags. Mozzie having some shots to the wall. One difference already being seen from UWW and Akron, though, that I will say is that UWW has not set foot inside of the building yet. Boomin just now entering. So even after getting all that info that all of it was clear up until study or not study astronomy, they were they weren't able to get in until just now. Jaeger's going to be taking some damage from the ace that pushes into the closet. Uh, he decides to fall even more back, but still try to hold on to uh, Aster's side. Spider with the bullet holes. Seems like Mozzie is definitely being a thorn in their side in this round. Yeah, this duo setup here by Matt and uh, Jekon though are really shutting it down. They also have Hennessy holding towards red so he can support them. But Jet will go down here and so will Matt. And that is their now back into a 4v3. And that is their complete contestion of a uh, statuary side. Bomb Dealt with, attackers. right? Yes, Tennessee was playing red, but he chose to run back into sight after those two kills came out. So now Akron has a minute, and they need to decide how they want to attack it. Luckily for them, there is no wall denial on Akron's side, so these walls will be free. Oh my god, what a shot coming out of Serma onto Rippled, getting that early pick. I think that was on 90 Rahul actually still, so really good pick for them. Spider's going to start using his utility, trying to open up the wall, the impact trick comes out. Spider's going to keep the wall. He has left That's interesting because there are two of them sitting in there right now. Yeah, I so. wonder if he knows. I wonder if he knows about this smoke. Playing the. Uh, Changing mics. I don't think he does. He might not be expecting the second person. Yeah, he gets the kill with the shotgun close. Immediately gets refrag though by Parker. One v two now, or two v one, one v one, and Parker will win it. I mean, good attack coming out of UWW, a little bit slow on the entry there, but once they got their feet holds, they're really rolling. Uh, one other thing that I would like to point out is that this started out as a 2-0 for Akron, and now it is a 2-5 for UWW. Yeah, UWW definitely showing the aggressive side that they needed to at those beginning two rounds. They kind of 
read into what they were doing wrong and definitely switched up something. Uh, I wonder if Akron is going to be able and uh, to take some denial here, but doesn't see it. Yeah, again, no wall denial. Uh, Hennessy did bring impacts last time and was able to impact a little bit of that vault wall. But honestly, I don't think it made much of a difference with that impact trick. Uh, coming in so late yeah, of the round, the ace just brute forced his way in, just throwing all three ace charges at the vault wall and eventually got through. So it'll be interesting to see what they change. I think just a little bit of negligence coming out of IMAP, not looking at the door at the right time, and just this teammate getting pinched. Honestly, they did a really good job with the roaming over there, though. Burnt a lot of time. So hopefully they can do the same thing again, though. They, uh, I don't think they decided to switch out anybody. I think they're going with the same exact lineup here. The Lucy's one, things like that. Yeah, I don't believe anybody insertion. got switched out. Nothing to the attacker side changed either. I wonder if they're gonna go Five and opt for the, uh, same exact type of take. Attacker's objective is to locate a bomb and Yeah, so far looking like the literally exact same setup from last round. Uh, Hennessy actually moving one of his Malusi charges over towards the master side, it looks like. Nope, placing it in the same spot. Okay. Uh, so exact same setup from last round. It'll just be how they hold it. Yeah. I'm definitely guessing that they saw something that they did wrong. Or something that, you know, just kind of happened. But, uh, Boomin's already in downstairs. Deciding Boomin to go... gonna try to crouch walk up. This Jaeger might be killed off of this. There's barbed wire here, but he might not know... He shoots the drone, so he might have a little bit of info that that flank might be coming up. Still has his back turned to it, though. It could be a free kill here for Boomin. Boomin the edge of the barbed wire. We'll get the punish onto the Jaeger. Opening pick goes to UWW. Well played by him. Matt opting to just dip out of there, knowing that he needs to leave with four people pinching him. Now, my... I... Th I'm at deciding to go for the somewhat flank. I think a he's just going to wait for located. the uh, for someone to try to rotate around. You know, biding by his time. I don't think anyone will come around, and the Nomad charge will come down as well. So, should be really hard for Matt to flank up now. It's definitely going to make a bit different. It seems like this 90. Uh, yeah, once again, 90 control coming. grabbed. There's only so much he can do, and Tennessee trapped inside a vault now. He could get the own hold. He's obviously looking for it, but Spider just opting to wait for now. Now, if Spider decides to try to do the same exact thing that he did last round, he's going to be um, he's going to be foiled because the Malusi still has. Did is that a C4? That side. was a C4. Oh. Okay. I think that was a C4 coming out from under. Or he said, what the fuck, so he probably downed himself. I think That's he downed himself with his ass charge. Yeah, I think he downed himself with his ass charge in accident. That is unfortunate, but... Flashbangs come out. Hennessy's full blinded. He could get swung here. Trades come back and forth. 2v4, leaving it all onto Hennessy and Arv. The smoke is still up, so he will have that burn for the 30 seconds. Maybe. But obviously a play needs to come out. Gets the 2k. Well played by Hennessy. Back onto a 2v2 now, and one is still outside of the building right now. Yeah, Boomin going f around for the uh, for the rotation. He jumped out of 90 though. Seconds to go. Okay. On the shield lights up his teammate, Ten but we'll remaining. get killed by the shotgun. All up to Boomin now. Five Coming 90 hall, impact seconds. comes out of Malusi. Just no time here, as long as the smoke hides over. And yeah, we'll play by Akron. Good 3k coming out of Hennessy there. Cleaning up on Vault, I think just a little bit sloppy. Nomad being too far ahead where the Thermite couldn't cover and Hennessy just picks up the 2k there. Yeah, Hennessy definitely had some uh, much, much appreciated aggression on the Vault, yeah, as we see here. Gets 2k because they kind of line up a little bit. Yeah, Malusi, Malusi coming in clutch on that, on that point. And they, uh, they trade it up to 3-5. Yeah, I think one thing that was important there, even though 
Matt did not get any kills at the end there. I think just leaving and keeping his life alive instead of trying to fight there was the right move. Uh, made the attackers a little bit more worried about that incoming flank. They nomaded it off, but still Boomin sat over there for a long period of time. Yeah, definitely, definitely about his time on that portion. Attackers need to locate and Same defuse bombs. Um, it seems like they're going to go for the other top of our site. I wonder how they're going to do this, because we've definitely seen a lot of extensions this game around. Go towards, uh, go towards aviator side, and one that went towards closet. But I'm definitely, definitely wondering how they're gonna pull this a little bit different. Looks like an aviator extension. Serma already over here grabbing these walls. Uh, impact trick coming out again from the way the the walls are reinforced. Reinforcing from the other side typically means that an impact trick will come out. So. Looks like Serma and Hennessy both have the impact, so we'll probably both be sitting tight waiting for this to come out. Serma also putting a sneaky maestro cam. Yeah, the only I, I'm, I'm the only thing that they switched out was the smoke for a mute, which you know brings some wall denial, brings some mute. You know, just mute is like an all-around good operator because four mute jammers can deny mostly any gadget. That's placed or mute and uh, just drones. Running up red right now. Just nobody is here. There is the Malusi device, so if he goes too far forward, he might trigger that. Matt's on his drone though, so he might be able to get a punish here. Lights up the Jaeger, but can't get the kill. Jekon getting that kill, but also setting himself to around 25 HP. Yeah, Jekon definitely. Um, nice shot, shot coming out of Jetcon as well. Great pre-fire. Matt will go down in exchange, but the 4v3, Jet can honestly back off here and be happy with the frags that he got. Yeah, the two frags are definitely definitely good, especially if the Ash was uh, not known on red. That could have been detrimental if that was not spotted out earlier, so good pick on his part. Yeah. Uh, also worth mentioning, those are the two top fraggers, although all the team is pretty close together. Those were the two people who were mostly doing the entry here, so the UWW attack might slow down a bit now that they've lost the two entry frags. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely going to slow down a little bit now with the IQ scanner and things of that nature. But it seems like they're just going to keep on... The, uh, the mute gets a little bit, a little bit pushy and decides to do half the damage onto the Nomad. Serma here with the aggressive angle above the bomb. Jetcon trying to trying to find another pick so he can even it up. Serma gets the pick onto the Nomad. Immediately refragged though by Parker onto Jetcon. This gets pushed. Bad time to reload. 2v1 now. Parker with low HP, but still winnable, I would say. Thermal proning on the angle gets pre-fired off of it. All on to Arv, and Arv wins it out there. Uh, well played by Akron. Good picks coming out of Jet. I will say I completely disagree with Boomin's take there. Just completely off balance. If it worked though, that's one of those things where it would be a smart play. But just pushing up red by yourself without really any droning is extremely risky and most of the time won't work out. Yeah, definitely, definitely somewhat of a, uh, if you lose it, you're frowned upon, but if you win it, then you're, uh, then you're kind of praised a little bit. Now, they decide to switch out the, what is it? The Maestro. Was... They were bringing the Mozzie before, and now they're bringing the Vigil, choosing to, to just switch that operator. Bomb. Still denies drones, but just different way of denying them. Right. Maestro six picks off for the pulse because it's a, a bottom floor kitchen and dining hole. You know, obviously pulse just racks up info and just completely relays it to a team. It just it's a very it's a very good info operator, I should say. Yeah. Also having three C4s here to C4 up. 
and probably two roamers that will be able to sit up there and hold for a long time. Ten seconds left before insertion. I'm definitely, remaining. I'm definitely curious how they're gonna decide to push this. Attackers they are moving out seem to, to they seem to have defeated. switched over for the sledge, so they're probably gonna be taking a lot of upstairs um, control. They've yeah, one thing noteworthy about their um, comp though on UWW is that the sledge is the only way they have soft destruct. So a lot of it will rely on him staying alive to be able to do that soft destruction. They have no other breaching charges, so the only thing else they would have would be the thermite charges, ash charges, and ace charges. Yeah, but obviously sledge is their the number one. Sledge is their main one, but he's also their entry, so he could be at a little bit of risk here if he decides to push in. Seems like it seems like Nomad is being their entry today, trying to get a little bit of a a pick onto the person that was sitting in Aster's side. Time to ring them here. Nobody's up here actually. This is really interesting. They reinforced all of it, but then just gave it up. I'm not getting the first kill onto Spider. Probably somebody lurking around on this side. I don't think he's aware that Boomin is also stacked on top of him over here, though. Looking for the gunfight, and will win it. My shot's coming out of IMAT, shutting down two players on the study side take. Definitely, definitely amazing picks. Kyper gonna push a little bit at the 90 side. Deal a ton of damage on I'm at, it's away, and kills Jet it's in the kill process. The jet. I'm at sitting by vault side right now. He can fall back, but I don't know if he knows that. Might think that he's still getting pinched. Pulse is still down here scanning. I think they're waiting for his call to C4. The two other defenders kind of just sitting around in sight. Yeah, definitely, definitely a very good operator to bring if you guys are playing vertical pulse. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely amazing two picks by uh by IMAT there, trading out his teammate and trading out his health for the Ash and the, the Ace. Ripple takes a little bit of damage, and so does Arv. I think they exchange in a gunfight a bit. Yeah, one thing coming out of Ripple though is that there hasn't been a lot of vertical play. I think every hole he's looked through so far has been a C4 hole. I'm at getting a triple in the round so far. Uh, also getting the Nomad. Probably lurking off by himself. Sensor activated. Now starting to run down red here. Gets the 4k. Can he go for the A's? All, those, all up to Parker now with the Thermite. Left. Sitting on the bottom of the stairs. We'll kill Serma, but I'm at. We'll get the A. Honestly, amazing shots by I'm at. I just gotta condemn him on that. Just able to basically pick off the attackers one by one. Yeah, really, just winning the ones there. Uh, UWW offering up a lot. But one thing that was interesting about Akron's setup is that even though they had all of it reinforced, nobody was playing over there. Jet was on red stairs, Matt was by study side. So just choosing to reinforce but give it up, that's a little bit questionable, but they did get the round win in the end. So they must have a, have had a strategy for that. Now they're deciding to switch back out the vigil for the smoke this time. You know. Uh, what Actually are you, for what the you... mute. But the mute, just more drone denial. Uh, really good options coming out. It took UWW a while to bring out that mozzie, but I can bring it out since round one, bring out the mozzie, then showing the vigil, now showing the mute. Just this drone denial with the statue band can really shut down teams on Villa. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely shown a lot that um these guys don't like drones, <laughs> especially since the Thatcher band. You know, is obviously so potent with the droning. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this setup goes. Matt obviously has a lot worse of a gun coming onto the SMG-11 instead of the Roni. So it'll be interesting to see if he still decides to extend over here with Jet. Maybe he'll play the closer angle than Astro with the shotgun and Jet will play the longer angle and just swap it. 
But Jet's in basement right now, or not basement, in kitchen, just running around, maybe looking for any drones lurking. Yeah, it seems like it seems like almost the same exact hold as before. Forward. He does have the MP5 actually. I thought he only had the shotgun because he was running around with the SMG 11. Getting some early damage exchange between Kuiper and I'm at here, but it's still outside of the building right now. Booming on the moon for the uh, Astro Repel. Honestly, you can do some some damage with that. That's a drone in here that might get good info on that. I'm at choosing to leave and just destroys Ripple on the 90 Repel. Nice shot coming out of I'm at there. Now, Spider's droning right now, so I think, I believe that they're going to be able to see that uh, they've stopped the roam because they've gotten the early pick and... I believe that all yeah. of them are dropped back to site. Yep, looks like a jet holding on to main there and Matt sitting in study. All four attackers right now are taking from Master's side, so I don't know if anybody will push study. I don't think they have. So making this call to adapt to their take is smart. Attackers have located a bomb. Yeah, I, I definitely I definitely like the play from uh, Akron. So uh, they get the pick, they get the initial, and then they slowly and surely fall back. Changing mic. They have no way to deal with these mic shots either, actually. Sarma getting the ace through the drone hole with his feet. That's a, that's a pretty nice shot on his part. Yeah, good pick coming out. Just getting an early pick like that is very useful. C4 gets shot out of midair by Kyber. Nice shot there. I might should be able to just see the tip of his head, and he does get that kill. There, am I also there contesting the same angle? Yeah, just these, just these shots from I'm at this round just definitely show, like, just how good of he is as a player. He's looking at him. There we go. Good kill. Coming up main stairs, but we'll get refragged, and now all onto Parker. Worried about somebody coming up red. And we'll get killed by I'm at. I'm at right now just really running through UWW. They need to find a way to shut him down. Whether it's more oppression through maybe a lion or something else since Jackal is banned. But something just needs to come out that can slow him down. Because right now he's getting ace, 3k's, 4k's. Just something needs to happen to shut him down. This 90 see. shot was really impressive though, like, just absolutely destroys Ripple on the 90 Repel. And now I I just gotta say this, that it was 2-5 before, it and... It was 2-5 right after half, and now we're yeah. into a 6-5. UWW has not run a single round since the first round of swap. Just, just the, just the sheer aggression from Akron's side, just just trying to dominate the competition it's just it's, it's absolutely it's, it's just, just great. yeah uww obviously needs to change something within their attacks because this is not working right now they haven't been able to find an attack round in four rounds now and it's really getting desperate for them they need this ot here Especially considering this is their map pick, right? Or no, this is Akron's map pick, I believe. Ten so, seconds to go. Yes. Deploying jammer. Yeah, five seconds to go. Akron's map pick. Which determines why UWW was on Attackers defense. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. Now, it seems like they switched out the Mozzie for... Or, they switched the uh, smoke back to a Mozzie. Which is definitely... I guess it has something to do with the, uh, the type of site that they're taking, or that they're holding, because each time they've just swapped it out to a different, to a different person. A bomb has been located. Boomin coming in based him and by himself. This really isn't a play you should be doing when you're facing down match point, but if you can find the frag, maybe that'll help out. But being in basement by yourself leaves you exposed to a lot of refrag potential. 
coming out of Akron since they usually play in duos. Yeah, I definitely don't think that the uh, that the solo that the solo play from the Ash has uh, has helped that much, but. Yeah, one thing to note is that he's not solo anymore. He had somebody droning. It looks like he's going to ask charge from under. The IQ is also under, so he'll just grab that. Impact trick coming out from the Lucy gets both ace charges. Only one more ace charge remaining. Is that all of them denied? That is all of them denied. All to the thermite now, so the thermite really needs to be able to grab the claw or they're in really bad trouble here. The position is not looking good with all three ace charges down so fast. Yeah, and Malusi and Jaeger still holding his angle onto red catch out Boomin that's rotating up. I'm at holding onto the Zofia over. Gets the initial to uh, Kuiper, that's all of his utility down. Wall will finally get open though. I don't know if they know Hennessy is close to this wall though. I don't believe they do. Arp He's holding some... Breach from a far angle though, so nobody will be in danger of them just getting swung at the moment. Yeah. Jaeger's still holding this angle on red, expecting Boomin to push up red. Hennessy gets the pick on uh, on that wall hold, and then Parker trades him out. Parker seems to know that this Mozzie is sitting by Astro's side. Maybe it's not the Mozzie, I think that's some mute actually sitting by Astro's side. Yeah, that is. Mm -hmm. Mute taking no damage there, but definitely knows that someone's watching the angle. He decides to run for it. 20 seconds left, though, and in the 3v3, they really need to start going here and setting up this plant. Ripple getting aggressive, but will get killed by Matt. All on to Boomin now, and Boomin will lose it. Akron takes Matt 1. Now, I just gotta say, like, their domination just showing, like, immediately after... I think they won... No, they didn't win any attack rounds, did they? They won the very first attack round and lost everything after that. So, Akron very clearly being dominant on defense when it comes to uh, Villa here. But this was their map pick, so moving into the next map, hopefully UWW can show some more strength coming in. Yeah, it's... It, it's... That was just sheer dominance on, uh, on Akron's side on the defensive half. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a quick break here as the teams are taking a break, and we will be right back in a minute.
you make me wanna talk back Talk back to you Say you say you like that If I hate you then find someone new Baby but you know I never will No So I choke you down just like a Alright, moving on to map 2 here, we have uh, UWW starting on attack since this was their map pick, Akron chose to start defense. Last map was a close one, ending 7-5, but Akron really showing some dominance when it came to defense on their own map. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to the map bans, or the, uh, the operator bans here, obviously Thatcher coming out because Thatcher's such an influential operator everywhere. But just definitely the bans are where it's normally showing how this map is going to be played out um definitely definitely gonna want to see where these guys go for yeah i agree one thing from uww's attack is that they seemed really information starved on villa they just did not have that drone work and one thing good about the yana that akron was bringing in their whole attack of rounds was that it ignores mozzie pass so uh yana drone cannot get mozzie pass so you can just run through a mozzie pass and ignore it but UWW not running that Yana did not get the information, but Akron also did not do so hot on their attacks either. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes now. Now, UWW opting to ban Nomad and Malusi. Now, Akron were using Nomad and Malusi so much on the last map, so it's kind of it's kind of a little bit obvious. And then Akron looking for the Mira ban again. I'm pretty sure... No, they banned something different on the last map, but Thatcher and Mira are going to be banned again. And, uh, and Nomad and Malusi that were very uh, prominent in the last map. Yeah, Nomad coming out every round from Akron, but also coming out every round from Whitewater. So it'll be interesting to see how they adjust in this setting. Mel also banned Malusi, one of those operators uh, I personally think is just annoying. And... They did not bring the right utility for her and for the Maestro cans, I feel like. So just removing that extra bit of burn is useful for them. Uh, we're going to be going through the 6 fifth phase here and getting the round started. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. Now, they have to go second floor here, which is normally the, well, for me personally, normally is the first site that everybody goes. Some people decide to go basement first, but we're, we're going upstairs today. Yeah, pretty typical lineup as well, coming out of UWW. One thing interesting, opting to drop the ace and play the ash. Uh, last time they brought the two hard bridges, which were Ace and Thermite, but now oh, Spider choosing to go over to Ash and Kuiper choosing to go yeah, over to Maverick. Left. Maverick very common on this map, as he's able to grab every wall, especially with a Thatcher band, just makes it a lot simpler. Mm -hmm. Now, especially since he has six canisters instead of just a small five from before, now that that buffs out, he can get even more walls, which is going to make him even more potent on maps like Oregon. Yes. Jammer ready. Reloading. Not looking get... for a run out here. Yeah, it seems it seems like he's just sitting on white just waiting for somebody to come by. Whitewater did... didn't shoot junkyard either, so he has two cams to run out off of. If he runs out right now, he might be in trouble though because there's a lot of people stacked outside there. Yeah, he's decided to switch up his play and 
shift on over to the other window, trying to still go for this run out. Uh, Jetcon is also in the uh, basement white stairs. Uh, helping I think out they his... had a drone on Matt, unless Boomin did not drone that far into showers, but... Should have gotten the info. I'm at deciding to shift over yet again. They still did not get this junkyard camp, so that is definitely going to be... I'm at getting Boomin will get punished. Yeah, just not shooting the default cam there. He did find the belt cam, but... Still unaware of that default cam. Yeah, definitely, definitely um, a very good pick, especially on the uh, Twitch. Kyfer. Maverick's gonna... struggling a bit here. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta open the first half of the wall, but a bit of a struggle getting the second half open. And we just had to make it a little bit bigger. There's two playing in here. He's got a shield. Or no, Arv is in trophy. Okay, one thing I don't like about the shield is that there's a little trick to it where if you go to the window directly to the left of this, you can map the shield from outside and be completely safe when doing it. Yeah. No, I don't know if uh, I don't know if Kiefer knows. I don't this. know if Kiefer knows this, but it is a trick that is up on the board. It doesn't. It, it definitely seems like he doesn't. Just saying because he's still in here and decided to need it. Um, obviously, the my my magnets are gonna get rid of that plan of nading it completely. Uh, and it my seems like well, my also has an ADS there, but I'm not sure if it was destroyed by that nade because. Oh no, it was not. It's still there. So... Now, what's interesting to see is that Ash has already used both of her charges. Yeah. And while that take continues, we're getting down into the last seconds of the round. Sounds like a lot of frags are coming out, but it sounds like Akron will win in the end. Yeah, Ak Akron showing that they're still pretty prominent on the uh, defender side on uh, on that round. Now, it's it's surprising to see because I I don't believe that the shield was destroyed on uh, on highway side. So that shield was... Okay, so the shield was destroyed. Okay. My, my mistake. So yeah, Hennessy just cleaning up over there then. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a bit of technical difficulties on our end, so we could not see that, unfortunately. But well played by there, being able to hold that shield successfully and playing it well, honestly. Getting both the frags, shutting down that added push allows them to just turn around and help his teammate with the main. Mm -hmm. Now they're opting to go basement side with the uh, with a Mute and a Goyo pick. Which is, uh, Goyo is definitely one of those defenders ever since that he was brought into the game it's definitely switched up the the meta a ton um especially since whenever he came out those shields got those slits in it that made him somewhat like a mirror window so he's he's uh he's definitely a uh he's definitely a prominent defender whenever whenever used correctly so five seconds left I was going to say as well, I really like Goyo on this side specifically because normally when you put that shield there, it just allows for a little bit more delay, so you can play that shield without having to be smoke. But Boomin playing Twitch very well, getting those first two uh, ADSs just off the wall right away. I think that's now, all three ADSs actually. It is, I think. Now, I don't know if... Goyo sees this and immediately takes yeah, his Goyo shield. Yeah, Goyo is gone. <laughs> they Goyo does not want to hold that anymore. With they, no ADS there, that is very hard to hold. Yeah, they completely opt to just close off blue and just give it to the give it to the attackers. Because after that, that's just uh, that's just a complete another blunder on that side. Uh, but we still one have Surma. Be, one thing that should be interesting about this hold is that we saw Matt at the very beginning of the round reinforce the walls to stage. So, if they're roaming up there, it might be harder for them to get to these back tower stairs and lodge this guy out of the collection. And obviously, they're making quick work of it. Boomin taking a little bit of HP from the Nitro Cell, and uh, Boomin getting the initial pick. He says, you take my health, I think I'd take you. Yeah, good pick coming out of Boomin. 
Uh, Arv knowing he was there, but just not able to get that kill. It looks Sir, like they have back tower control, but he might be outside of it. I think that's actually the Maverick droning down there. So, yeah, yeah. he's outside droning right now. Yep. Kyver sees some some knowledge that he sees and, uh, and decides to push on in. But Surma with this nasty angle, I don't know if uh, Kaifa will be able to see it out. And he does not. Surma gets fragged over there. Now all four of them are inside of blue, so... Take will be completely one-dimensional here. That's the and Ash gone. Mad so this is what they were going for. They decided to reinforce there to hold meeting to keep the hack open. Really interesting play. Twitch will get down into a 2v2 now. Does Ripple know there's a second one up here? He does not. He doesn't. All onto Parker now. From the hatch above, still on second floor is the Jaeger taking some damage off of Parker. This Parker seems to have the kill here, but loses the one actually. Yep, forced to drop. Planet starts going down. TCSG not the friend of Goyo today. Attack Parker and Jet now on a 1v1. Diffuser gets planted down. Parker backs up to stairs, trying to get the long end onto the hallway. Doesn't he's holding it really to... passively, though. He's allowing mm. Jet to get in here for free. I'm guessing he's going to try to get him to diffuse a little bit. Try to get him to swing out. Oh. Parker takes a little bit of damage off of Jet, but still, Jet has the edge on him. Jet decides to be aggressive, and Jet wins it out. Wins the one. Mm -hmm. Plenty of time Parker was on low him. HP, though, so I think if he had a little bit more HP, that was definitely winnable. That play was Defenders really interesting coming out of Akron, choosing Defenders to win. open up the hatch. Usually a hatch you want closed, but choosing to sit up there and hold it heavy instead. Yeah, that, that was very interesting. We had the Jaeger sitting down on highway. Uh, with that hatch open as well, just watching. I believe that they also had another one sitting down and meeting, right? They had yeah, one. Yeah, and the angle, the angle they were holding was three stories. So the Jaeger was looking through the hatch in attic, through the hatch in electrical, and then to the door of blue. So an extremely long angle coming out, and mm -hmm. one that's really outside of the box, and one that normally teams wouldn't think about. So well played by Akron there. Now they have to go to uh, one of the first floor sites because they've they're trying to go for the clean sweep on the uh, three. Uh, they decide to go for a dining hold instead of um, some teams like to go meeting, some teams like to go dining. It's uh, it's interesting. Sorry, it's interesting to see how um, how much different it is during the uh, during a meeting hold or a dining hold, considering that they do have one site completely together. Yeah, I believe most teams opt to choose meeting. I think that's generally considered the better site. But choosing to go dining here, obviously they have something special that they want to show. Or maybe something they want to pull out here. Uh, Arv did open the hatch, so they will be playing above. Depends on how many people are playing above it, though. Mm -hmm. I'm at reinforcing the, uh, the kids' dorm. All of kids, so, which is a Yeah. Cool. So he's he's just looking to hold on to this as long as possible and then drop through. <laughs> Rippled asking the Maestro to go away from his drone. That's that's pretty nice. And then Surma opening up the bottom of the wall to uh, to impact trick. I actually really like these setups coming out of Akron. They're pretty creative in the way that they're thinking about holding it. The first site was pretty default, but these last two sites have been really interesting to see how the holds are different compared to other teams. So what's surprising to see right now is that main wall is actually open as well. Possibly to go for another impact trick or just to have... They have the shield on top of the table for some sort of makeshift mirror that they've uh, that they've decided to pull out. So that's why the mirror banners were coming out because they, they decide, hey, we don't need it. We've got shields. we got everything. You know, this is bulletproof enough. Matt and Jet both holding above again. Both of them just duoed. Moomin gets in fast to armory. I don't know if he heard that. Matt should have heard him shoot there, though. So. Yeah, and they and also then, have him on cam. Yeah. I'm not going to be playing aggressive from the master bedroom, but then there's also Jaeger upstairs in the uh, in kids' dorm. 
So I wonder how or if this uh, Jaeger is going to swing to try to protect the Legion or if Legion is just going to fall back. No, he's going to get even more aggressive and try to get the pick on the Boomin, but uh, Mrs. Boomin that's just nipped on the door and makes a rotate into, uh, into main. Yeah, Legion does have his impact though, so he's able to get out safely there without exposing himself to too many angles. Mm -hmm. Ripple sees that uh, Kid's Dorm is reinforced onto their side, so there's no rotation kind of come out there. I'm at still playing a little bit aggressive into the dorm, into uh, in onto Bunk. So we'll see if he can get an initial pick onto there. There's still a minute left in the round, which they've wasted a decent chunk of time already from the attacker side. It seems like everybody's in Attic except for Boomin. So that is very interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on the attackers now to get this start rolling because... They have spent uh, almost the entire round now trying to clear these upstairs players and have made very little progress. Sarah now up here to help as well, knowing that there's not a lot of time left. So they'll probably end in frags. Gets they one all kill, just... but immediately gets traded. IMAC gets the second. Down to a 4v2. Jetcon gets one. Jetcon gets two. All onto Boomin now, who's downstairs. No diffuser, so... This round's looking pretty over. Again, UWW playing this really slow, honestly. Taking a lot of time to get into Attic, to get that clear start rolling. And then when we got to it, they opted not to open those walls. There was nothing on it. But Boomin, you know, still trying to put up a fight. Eight seconds yeah, left Boomin in the round. Still putting up a fight. But the fuser is down in Attic. And his leaves in mind, so now one should still be hiding. Yep. And Matt testing his crouch key as well. They actually did get that wall opening kids eventually, which is good to see, but... Really slow coming out of UWW, taking their time, but honestly, they need to go faster than that. There's still a site they have to take even after they clear that upstairs control. Yeah, and it's very interesting to see that um, that four of them were in on highway, and you know, one was only pushing for master side. So it's it's definitely very interesting to see like how they're not really trying to split up their push in a sense. And like how nobody's whole like helping out the Twitch that's trying to push from master side. So Yeah, I agree with that there. Uh Matt really allowed to just play close to that big window. If they had somebody on that, that position's not playable because he was literally just sitting in front of the big window waiting for people to come into him. And Jet was just sitting in kids. They just needed a way that they could clear them faster. Because the clear came in just way too slow. Yeah, Boomin's still opting to go for the Twitch pick, which has definitely been uh, been a, a tad bit helpful for the UWW side. Not really switching up their lineup as well. But the Valkyrie, I believe, was not shown at all. No, it was shown in the first round, correct? It was shown in the first round when he yeah. got the run out onto Boomin. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the Twitch has been working pretty well for them, though. He's been able to get a lot of the ADSs off, some of the mute jammers, stuff like that, so... I think the Twitch has been working, but I don't know if it's what they need. Yeah. It's uh it's definitely good to see that uh IMAT is um is very versatile in the picks that he decides to to uh pursue. Because he has switched, I believe, every single round onto a different operator. And then he's gonna play aggressive into small towers. That's that's definitely it's definitely different. Yeah. The Maverick did take early damage from a spawn peak. I'm not sure who was peeking. I'm imagining it was Jet since he was over by the armory tied last scene. But just a little handicap on Kaifer right now playing at half health. Yeah, and then Kaifer gonna decide to just Maverick trick the wall because they're not really gonna deal with going below and trying to get it. Hi Matt with the initial pick onto Spider, that's all his utility gone. A pretty a pretty devastating pick, especially since they're already 3-0. Yeah, and another thing to note, that's another run out again. Uh, just not being able to find those Valkams, maybe an IQ is needed for this site. Yeah, and just, just looking at the utility right now, they only have the three flashbangs on um, on Thermite. That, and then the two stuns onto Rippled, if they want to get rid of this. The only things that can actually destroy it are the two nades for Maverick and... Uh, and then the one impact. Yeah, the Twitch run was able to get the ADS, so I think the shield's gone with that nade. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It and is. well, my fault, Zach. Giving mm -hmm. up out of control. But they've definitely done sufficient amount of time wasting because it's a minute 15 and they're also a man down on the UWW side. So, uh, it's looking it's looking pretty uh, pretty promising for Akron right now. I'm just saying how the... <laughs> and when Mai gets aggressive and peaks highway. That's Kaifer to one. C4 going over, but will miss. Gets stuck on the roof there. Mm -hmm. Both of those C4s get caught in the light. Kaifer is at extremely low HP, which you don't want to see at this moment in time, especially from that run out at the beginning, or the, uh, the spawn peak at the beginning. Now these footholds here from Surmer is definitely going to play a part into this uh, late round. I'm at getting a pick on to Boomin. Definitely not what you need on the UWW side right about now. Kaifer trying yeah, to that even That was their big window player as well, so now they're all pinched inside of this attic side take. Kaifer dies as well, all up to Parker, close on the attic wall. We'll get the mm. one frag, but in a 4v1, it's looking pretty grim here. 15 seconds remaining. Yeah, and we'll and get Surma, by Surma. Yep, Surma laying down in bunk will uh, we'll close out the round. Normally, when you see an attic take, you're expecting to also see a master take, but UWW opting not to go for that after the first round, which is a bit confusing because attic's good control to have but if you don't have master that pinch really never comes through and trying to bottleneck people through attic i don't think is the play it's extremely hard to get through there's multiple angles it's just hard for them to push yeah and on the uww side like we've only we've only seen a four to one push four people pushing into highway and then one person pushing the master on the uh on the on the first floor site and then the um the switch over to the one pushing from um, big window and then four pushing highway again. So de definitely, they definitely need to switch something up on the UWW side, or else it does seem Attack grim for the uh, for their attacking rounds. Yeah, this is generally considered a defender sided map, especially when Thatcher is banned. I personally think this is one of the most balanced maps because of the way that it plays out. Because I feel like there's so many ways to attack the sites. But UWW really opting to go single-minded, just we're going to push this side and only this side. And it's really not working out for them right now. Yeah, it, it's definitely it's definitely uh, a little bit heartbreaking to see. But um, because they're not really switching up anything. But I believe that they're just going to be doing the same exact, same exact stuff. Uh, Jaeger laying down in barrels trying to see if he can spot a... Spot a drone on the way down, but uh, sadly he's not going to be able to get one of them. Yeah, just staring into the wall is a bit weird there, but maybe his setup is already complete and he was just taking a quick break. Mm -hmm. no. Drone work coming out, spots the shield again. Will be the Goyle. Looks like the Twitch drone hasn't gotten the ADSs quite yet. But there's also a Mute Jammer there. Mute is waiting for it. He still will get one ADS though. Which is, which is definitely what someone would... C4 comes out, really lucky that it does not connect with the Ash there actually. And then and we'll start closing off. Yep. They decide to uh they decide to close off and uh just kinda take it over. Yeah. The good thing about that take there is that UWW was able to take it very quickly compared to last time. Well the last time it was quick as well because of the mm -hmm. Twitch drone. But now they need to figure out a way to deal with his upstairs presence because They've got to deal with that Legion and Jaeger somehow. That's not just going to disappear. Yeah, but it definitely it definitely seems like they're still going for the um the 1 to uh 4 type of push. Oh. Uh, Kaifer takes a ton of damage through these Maverick holes. There's three mute jammers on this wall. <laughs> Spider will get down there. That is the Ash down. We'll try to get res. I think that are is a... really outbraining them by putting down three mute jammers. They're probably not expecting that, so yeah. And I don't think Kaifer is going to be. And he's they're just giving up on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. So... I, I... Kaifer's at such low like HP. Yeah. Kaifer's at such low HP. Nope. He's definitely not going to try to push those holes again. Yeah. And now they're forced to go for this e-box take, which is exactly what Akron wants them to do, since they've got those long angles from above again. And Kaifu will get punished as well, so R picking up the kill through all of those probably mad feet holes. Yeah, so far Kaifu hasn't really been showing a presence 
on uh, on this map so far. Um, just seeing his uh, just seeing his uh, kill death ratio. But Surma taking a little bit of damage, still trying to hold on to pillar here. Arv getting traded out from Parker. It's a good time on him trying to take it back for the attackers. Boomin gets the frag onto Hennessy as well, so they have Boomin's... sight now. Last two players are off sight, so if they know this, they can flood in. Yeah, Opting Boomin... to avoid that angle, smart play, like that angle is lethal. And Matt coming down the back stairs, so they will have sight control here fully towards the main side. I might getting another pick on a spider, it makes it a 2v2. Parker, get the plant down. Now it is a 2v2 with the fuser down. One's on uh, mid tower stairs, and then one's on the e box hatch. It's looking, it's looking a little bit desperate for the uh, for the defender side here, but obviously they have 32 seconds, so they're not really. They're just gonna abide by their time, try to take it, take it a little bit slower. Parker is low HP though, so they're opting to double up together. Parker falling all the way back, not ready for this angle by Boomin. Boom picks up the triple kill, all on to Jetcon now. It looks like UWW is getting their first round here, and they will. Big play mm -hmm. coming out of Boom and getting the 4K, just walking down freezer steps. Nobody was aware he was there and getting it. That's just a small hole in Akron's defense because I think the Goyo is meant to be playing over there, but he doubled up with the mute to try to help stop that push, allowing Boom to just walk down those back stairs. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely still think that these one to four ratios are um with the with how they're splitting up is definitely not how they should be taking but good job on boomin with the um with the 4k on the round and definitely seeing seeing a little bit of a uh a little bit of a hole in their plans yeah finding the opportunity and taking it that's well played by boomin there seeing the opportunity to just walk down freezer stairs gets his 4k and is able to claim the round for uww They'll probably need a second round here, though, if they want to stand a chance on the second half of this map. Yeah. Arv deciding to go from the uh, Mute to the uh, Kaid, probably to uh, make it so that it's harder, a little bit harder for the Maverick to try to just open up the wall. Um, but to be completely honest, I feel like if they see that, they're probably just going to Maverick trick it anyways. So... Honestly, I really like that big brain play from R putting down three mute jammers on a single wall and just forcing the attackers. The attackers got really confused, didn't want to burn any more time since they were getting their feet shot through the Maverick holes, and just opted to just leave it there. Uh, it did end up being a UWW win anyways, but I thought that was a creative way to hold that down. Now, what I'm wondering is what they're going to decide to switch up. Maybe the Goyo... You know, switches back over to the freezer side, or maybe the Goyo holds on to, uh, maybe the Goyo holds on to blue. But they definitely did change something up here because so far it's just looking like a normal, a normal hold from Akron. Yeah, I think Akron saw their flaws in that round. Really, just giving up freezer was their flaw. So I think they're just going for the exact same hold, seeing if that'll work. Mm -hmm. I definitely, I definitely have to give props to. Props to Akron to uh, for seeing like what their mistakes are and deciding to go for the same exact site twice. <laughs> I'm at getting an initial pick onto Boomin. That is going to be all of his Twitch drones and that Claymore off the board. Those Twitch drones have been uh, very, very spectacular, and especially Boomin as a player getting that 4K. But Spider is just going to push right in, get the initial pick onto Arv. Yeah, Arv trying to go for the bait there. Maybe not the play. Trying to get a little bit more aggressive than he should have. Spiders. I spiders think spider's gonna die done. here. Yeah, spider's yeah, dead spider's here. Done. Good idea coming out of the mat, shooting that Goyo shield. Yeah, definitely. They're trying to reinforce now, closing it off. And they will get it off, okay. I mean. It works out in the end, so. Yeah. Definitely, definitely spider being. Stuck between a rock and a hard place with that electric Kaid and being at such low HP from that Goyo shield was not helping them in any favors. But it seems like now all these three players are just going to be stuck in uh, in blue. Yeah, they need to get Surma out of here somehow. And they don't have a way to clear these angles, I think, besides the Maverick. So. Yeah, oh, and Maverick. The drone hole. 
Yeah, and Maverick's at such a low HP, it's probably detrimental that he's at this type of thing. Surma still holding that angle, expecting, you know, a push down from tower stairs because they've done it every other time and he'd heard the goo mine. Kaifer's still trying to get this wall open, trying to find the Kaid. Ooh. I wonder how this is going to go down. Surma taking no damage, but getting a little bit of damage off to Rippled. This angle is so hard to contest for the attackers. He's going to have to find a way to clear the shield. Or he gets actually it. wins the gunfight. Well, good shot coming out of Rippled. That's usually a really hard angle for the attackers to win. Jet is still upstairs holding electric, so they really can't push through there. I'm at with the triple kill already. I met with the quad and going for the, and the ace. ace. I met just showing his dominance on just the, the initial spawn peak and then just the peaks around everywhere. Just it, props, props to props to him. They take Akron takes it five one, switching over to the other side. Yeah, this is not looking so good for EWW. It is defender sided, so they can come back from this. But 5-1 is typically not a good scoreline for you to be going into. It's really hard to recover from deep scorelines from this because just two mistakes and the run can be over here. Yeah, normally normally you're looking for, uh, at worst, a 4-2 or a 3-3 to try to take the half. But um, it seems like... It seems like uh, Akron is deciding to go for. Uh, it seems like Akron is deciding to go for the double hard breach with the ace instead of the thermite. Now, obviously, the AK-12 is definitely more potent, but um, you know, thermite is definitely faster with the uh, with how he opens a big hole, but ace is a little bit quicker to open up a smaller hole. And with that ace, uh, with that ace nerf coming out. Just this patch around, he's only open. He's only able to open up. Uh, he's only his charges only open up two instead of the normal three. So yeah, this is honestly looking like more of a default setup coming out of UWW. No crazy runs up in tower, just a normal extension with a pillar hold to help with the blue guy. And the holes into freezer, it looks like, as well, whenever the Goyle decides to set those up. Or Goyle has a uh, vector, so he won't be able to set up this hole, actually. But this is looking more like the standard hole that you would see on this map. Yeah, and definitely. Akron immediately going for a blue take. I feel like, I feel like Akron is definitely more uh, just showing how they held it before. They're definitely more, uh, more used to taking for blue side. And it seems like they've only got two, which is definitely different from UWW, which had mostly almost everybody down here. So it's yeah. definitely it's definitely different to see. I have three. They're waiting on R to go grab these walls. But Maverick and Zof will be taking this backside. And they have three people looking over here, so interesting to see how they hold this. Yeah, so far the only damage that's been taken is from Hennessy doing 75% of his damage, I believe, from Kiefer, just getting a little bit of a, a little bit of nicks on him. Oh, Kiefer getting a little bit aggressive. Extremely aggressive. He gets we'll eventually get finished off by Kiefer. No, I might, I might uh, get. Arv is dead. So, with the hard breaks down and only the Maverick remaining, it's gonna take a lot of time for them to be able to open that wall successfully. Rippled in a really bad spot, but still gets the frag. Down to a 2v4 now. Last two on the backstairs. Not sure if they're aware of that. Yeah, Rippled definitely Ripple stuck. Rippled just eating everything here. Yeah, Rippled definitely stuck between a rock and a hard place, but I don't know if he knows if anybody's on his stairs anymore. Boomin could go for the flank here. He's definitely holding on a little bit, and he's only got Sermon to deal with. Sermon knows that he's Ripple down Rippled. Rippled eventually gets down by this nade. Mm-hmm. Uh, Boomin's still on the flank, so it is a 2v2 on site. But Boomin's coming pretty close behind Serma. I don't know if they have a flank drop for this. Doesn't look Buck. like it. Buck is rotating around. Oh, we're coming Boomin's... above him. Boomin. And then Parker gets Boomin the last one. playing with fire there, hearing the footsteps, but choosing not to look until the very last second. 
First defender round, much more potent for UWW, and they take it. Now it is a 5-2 scoreline for Akron. Yeah, that aggressive blue extension, uh, pretty typical, but also very strong, clearly. Having that smoke, which Akron did not show, really slows down the attack, forces them to respect it and not run in. Yeah, especially that initial damage onto the, uh, or the initial picks definitely, definitely showed to be, uh, to be better there. But they just could not get rippled off that pillar without, like, wasting time and wasting a man, you know what I mean? Yeah, Rippled really ate everything. He ate one nade and then a Goyo shield, and it took until the second nade to actually kill him. So really well played, playing that pillar position pretty much perfectly there. Able to support the guy deep in blue, and also able to sit there and spend your life well, really, and just hold on strongly. Mm -hmm. Now UWW is switching over to the uh, to the top floor side. They um. They decide to switch out a few operators, like Smoke is no longer present, and uh, and they they decide to switch that out for the Bandit, right? The Bandit and the Val. Yeah. One thing I don't like about Bandit over Kade on this map specifically is that a lot of the floor is soft, so it has soft destruction capabilities, meaning that if an Ash goes under, they can get it for free, while if a Kade is up, they need to spend a little bit more time searching for that Kade charge. Yes, but the but the upside for it is that Boomin does roam a ton. So, yes, Boomin now has a pretty good gun. Boomin just runs oh. straight into tower actually, and Maverick just repels into him. A bit of a confusing play here by both sides. Boomin just straight runs in, and the Maverick knows he's in there, but just repels in anyways. I'm very questionable coming out of Serma, but Jet seems to be backing off here, not wanting to deal with. Boomin sitting in tower. Yeah, Boomin Maybe retreats expecting up to, him to leave, floor. but yeah, I definitely feel as though that was a uh, that was a call on um, on Akron's side. That was probably that it was a clear. missed call. Yeah, yeah, that was probably so he... somebody holding a drone and saying that they didn't see anybody run up when Boomin might have missed the timing or something like that. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if he uh, if he sticks that animation of uh, of deciding to jump into the window, he can't just cancel it. So he was probably stuck in that animation right as somebody called that there was somebody in there. So a very big, a very big uh, blunder for the Akron side. But you know, it is looking a little bit better for the for UWW. Well, my, and, uh, I'm aware that the breach is open. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, and probably I, a bad call coming out of UWW as well there. Mm -hmm. Just not acknowledging that breach is open there, even though Valk was sitting close by. Caster's curse strikes me again as uh, as they trade it back to four four, but Arv does take a lot of damage. But Jetcon says no thank you and basically refrags his friend, and uh, and gets a kill on a spider. The top white Rippled was able to down the ace, but cannot confirm that kill. Jet's in deep now. Revive's coming through. All up to Rippled and Boomin, but Boomin was last seen by Tower. He's probably nowhere close by. I'm at just yeah, Boomin's just now getting to Master. <laughs> Looks like they have info blowing. on him. Maybe not. Trying to get Diffuser back. Attackers have recovered their Diffuser. They're all just starting to funnel towards this uh, towards this breach as it's now a 1v3 against Boomin. He's going to have to get the ace to uh to clutch it out here he downs the Zofia, but obviously she's able to withstand and pick herself back up the fuser gets down he does take a little bit of damage off to imat that's pushing into attic he gets the zof that he downed earlier now he's got a triple kill he has to get rid of this guy on attic and the guy on bunk oh it's, it's definitely a good i can't clutch it yeah yeah definitely good effort from boomin but um obviously the one before not happening today and uh boomin gets killed it is now onto match point for akron yeah, a little bit of an oops coming out of both sides with Serma repelling in and Kuiper being unaware that the breach was open already. Uh, that just seems like a little bit of lack of comms there, but should be fixable for both teams. That's just something that is a mistake, hopefully made once. Mm -hmm. And they opt to go second floor again. Which is, uh... Which is definitely different. They, um... 
I don't think they really switched up any operators, did they? I feel like there's no, a few. No, this is the exact same lineup from last time. Yeah. For both sides. <laughs> Uh, UWW opting to go with the same exact lineup. I guess they saw the the error uh, the error in their ways, um, but that was definitely a monstrous uh, a monstrous performance on the Akron side. I gotta say, Jetcon in particular because he got three frags in that round, right? Yeah, Jet really got the opening there from them. Able to push up white, a hole in UWW's defense there. Able to just walk up white for free. Get a kill on somebody who is on spider that was unaware, and then get the second frag as well when entering into site. Mm -hmm. It was basically whenever they shot Arv, he uh, he said no and, and uh, got rid of one of their teammates. So it's uh it's definitely it's definitely a monstrous play from Jackcon, and I gotta gotta give my nod to him. Looks like the exact same setup coming out here. Uh, I don't see anything that has changed in particular. Spider is looking for a run out. It looks like He's sitting over here by Junkyard spawn. Yeah, these these just kind of seem like normal setups from uh, UWW. I've uh, I've got to say, but it, it is it is very special in in particular to see how much uh, how much different setups are from the uh, default on Akron's side to uh, to the change into UWW. Akron acknowledging that it's only the bandit and not the cade, so just ass charging it from below and going quickly. Boomin is playing below though, so he's close to classroom. Might be able to find this ash if she walks in. C4 goes out, does a lot of damage to R, but did not find the kill or the down. Boomin's still downstairs. Spider gets the initial pick onto R, which is their hard breach down, but they don't really need it because the wall's already gone. But the AK-12 could have been monstrous in the right hands not Having able to get person down as well is pretty big yeah. uh, clearly a cam being somewhere outside to help get that kill hennessy looking for it i can't find it here mm -hmm. boomin will get droned out they know that he's sitting in classroom trying to escape we'll get out and i believe that boomin did hear the repel go off oh. Okay, that was just that was just through the wall. The person in attic side. I thought he was uh thought he was getting the initial pick onto there as well. But um, I'm really aggressive in trophy here. Just sitting in a corner chilling. Yeah. I've had the wall open, but we'll jump right into Maestro's line of sight. Mm -hmm. Peeking from the three v five. Peeking from the bunk window. Akron does need to get back some of these frags that have been. Uh, that have been dished out. Otherwise, they're, uh, it's looking pretty grim. Spider now with the double kill onto IMAT. Hennessy able to trade that back. Attackers have located a bomb. 2v5. They do have... 2v4, I mean. They do have the walls opened up, so they do have the options to get into site. But, depending how they play it. Now down to the one before. I'll let the deck on on big window. Gets a first frag. But really not much you can do from this position, especially with 30 seconds left. C4 prepped by the bandit, just waiting for him to jump in. There's a vault down, C4 comes out, and we'll get the kill with it. Well played round from UWW there. This is definitely this is definitely the spark that they needed to uh start the uh start the comeback. But now they have the uh now they have the ever looming match point to uh to try and deal with. Yeah, three rounds straight. They need to win three rounds straight here, which means they will eventually need to go to an offsite as well. Last time, this laundry hold looked pretty convincing for Whitewater, able to really lock down blue. So it might be interesting to see if they switch to a freezer main take. But judging by the spawns, it looks like they're going for blue again. Mm -hmm. And uh, Akron deciding to go with the same exact lineup. I guess this is. Oh, actually, they're six picking the Mavericks. To a Maverick. To a Maverick. Never mind. <laughs> they uh they stick the same exact lineup basically. I guess this is uh I guess this is their normal lineup Akron for everything. And bomb. Yeah, Akron seems like they just like a lineup on a map and they'll just stick with it. A little bit of server lag coming in there, booming just waiting to put up that wall. Mm -hmm. 
making sure the uh making sure the wall is uh ripe for the picking. <laughs> Doing it twice now. Um But yeah, it, it's one definitely thing, One thing interesting here is that Spider just made this uh hole into freezer vaultable. So I don't know what they're planning to do with that, but they have a vault hole now in the freezer. Ten seconds remaining. Normally it would just be head holes there. Yeah. It's it, it's definitely interesting to see how uh the Goyo shield is very aggressive in uh in blue. It's probably just to uh yeah. to stop them from being able to push, maybe because the blue maybe because uh just, just to help out that smoke that's trying to push out from there. Wait, it's just they a little bit more of delay. They don't have a Jaeger. They don't I, have a Jaeger. I just realized that. I was waiting for the ADSs to get put down. I was like, the Jaeger is very late on it. But no, they just I don't think... have. One. Yeah, I think Matt drone that as well and saw that there is no Jaeger, so all these shields are getting burned really fast. Spider gets the first kill, Jackon immediately getting that refrag onto Kyper. Nice flick. Matt gets the kill onto Ripple playing Pillar. And now they're basically forced on the blue. Spider is still sitting here on the shield, but a lot of frags coming out quickly. Yeah, right there was a 3v3 until Serma got picked back up. So now Serma's going to be at 20 HP, which is definitely a deficit. Ash tending to push straight on in. You know, deciding, deciding just keep on going towards Pillar. I don't Spider think... gets aggressive, not aware of Arv being behind him, though. Gets that frag. Mac gets refrag, though. Parker coming back onto the shield. This might not be expected. I don't know if they have a drone back there holding him. It looks like they do. Still wins the fight anyways. Good shot from Parker. Into the 2v2 now. Nade comes out into Freezer. Sermon, it's punishing the boom and all on Parker. 1v1 now. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Now, Serma, the one that I was talking about earlier, just got down, so he's still stuck at that 20 HP, but these Legion Mines could definitely be a deficit, the ones that are in pocket. He's got a... He's got a nade in mm -hmm. now, that nade... misses. Yeah, that nade could have been a could have been a godsend, but uh, sadly it's not. I think Parker knew and heard him start walking all the way around sites. Knows that he's not behind him anymore. Really just playing Ring Around the Rosie here between the two sides, just not catching each other at the right time. It looks like Parker. this will be the kill for Parker though, and he will win the 1v1. Good 1v2 coming out of Parker there, really well played. Uh, getting aggressive into blue was definitely smart, getting that refrag onto Parker, and then from there just cleaning up the last two as well. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm, what I'm seeing here is that whenever UWW, I feel like their defense is definitely a lot more ironed out and polished rather than their attacks because now it's it's looking like just you know back and forth and back and forth and back and forth between akron and uh uww but on attack they they just got like decimated basically yeah attack was a really big struggle for whitewater they really could not find their footing anywhere but now moving on to defense, they've sure found a lot of momentum. Yeah. Spider going over to Frost, so and interesting boom. to see where he puts his Frost maps. Yeah, and Boomin opting to switch from the Bandit onto the Rook. Now, obviously, Rook has is a uh, is a decently strong operator with the two times, you know, the MP5, the thing okay, that Doc doesn't have, which is the 1.5 on Doc. But um, the Rook armor is definitely going to be... Uh, Definitely gonna be a little bit. Mm, they must. They must have seen something, or he just brought it for the gun. Maybe the impacts. But the uh, the frost pick is definitely something different. They must have seen something in the way that Akron plays to be able to switch over to this frost pick. Now frost obviously now has the secondary shotgun, the Mira's secondary shotgun. So she's able to make these rotations now from. Uh, for uh for the top hold instead of having somebody else rotate around or having boom and use his impacts which is definitely very nice one thing that's interesting here is that the upstairs reinforcements these are the reinforcements typically seen when you were holding the other tertiary side meeting but they're using this to hold onto upstairs for the uh kitchen side so normally you would want to hold tower so that you can get advantage of that hatch but mm -hmm. That hatch is kind of useless since meeting is not the site. Mm -hmm.
but probably it's there just to kind of waste the attacker's utility, you know, try to get them to push around because you, know, you only have so much. Uh, but they're gonna be they're gonna take over top of small tower almost immediately. Yeah, this take is coming in really quickly. Yep, Surma, Surma just abiding by his time, waiting to see if anybody's gonna swing out for the uh, for the uh, impact trucking hole, but probably not so. Sophia using some utility to try to stun the person in uh, in bunks, so that's that's good to see. I think he's just opening up line of sight so he can try to cut off anybody trying to rotate there. They will get confirmation on the guy on boost spot. We'll also see the cross map. And we'll get the kill onto the guy on boost. So that is the rook down. I'm not sure if Matt drone the rest of this and we'll know. It looks like Jet is aware though about the other guy top white. Mm -hmm. I'm at with the Parker uh, to go down. I'm at and uh and Arv just getting the initial entries, making it a 3v5 immediately for UWW. It is not looking good for them. You know, Frost with the... Uh, Frost definitely holding onto a shield. No, because you, you have to you have to hold onto white to be able to keep this site. Kaifer. Yeah, they lost their shower player though, which typically on this site is the most important player to keep alive. You usually want that player alive to help deny the site take. But with him down, they have free control of showers there. Mm -hmm. Kaifer trying to take the long engagement with the SMG-11. Obviously, this is more of a close range type of thing. Hennessy with another pick onto uh, onto Parker. Spider trying to draw it back. Some of the trying to clean up the wounds that have been made by uh, by Akron right now. Kaifer doing a little bit of damage on the Hennessy. Took away 75 HP from him. Plant should be going down here. Yeah, Plant going down now. Maverick proning on the angle. We'll get the Krug. All into Kaifer now, and Kaifer will lose his one. Akron wins 2-0 in this series. Really well played by them. Finally able to get it back at that very last attack when it gets to the tertiary site. Mm -hmm. Definitely definitely a very well played from, uh, from Akron's side. You know, that last round just showing showing the entry potential from this team and just like the all-around domination that they, that they bring so it's, uh, it's definitely it's definitely good to see i met with 17 frags at the end really well played from him on this map really popping off and feeling it yeah i'm at i'm at just showing just showing how much domination that he can put as himself just as a whole across these both of these maps but um it was definitely it was definitely close. It was definitely close. I, I will still give my nod to UWW. It was definitely close. But the attacking side from UWW is just, you know. It doesn't it doesn't yeah, it definitely seem, seem kinda of sloppy. Mm -hmm. But overall a good match. Very defender sided, obviously, from both sides. But we will have an interview coming up here, so mm -hmm. Okay, now and we have confirmation that it will be IMAC coming in as well, the top fragger from Akron. Hello! What's up, Matt? Congratulations on your win there. Thank you, Mend. That was an absolutely dominant performance on the beginning half. 5 1 on the split, and you just ending it out with around 15 frags altogether. How do you, how do you feel about that map? Uh, I think today was not a great day for us, uh, showing-wise. We assumed that this game was going to be... Like, we, we went into this assuming we were favored, and we played kind of carelessly because of that. And, like, game one and game two ended up becoming too close because we were just... As you guys saw, we were playing, like, solo plays, hero plays, like, person pushing guys for trying to, you know, get an opening for us. And then once, we, once I, you know, we, we talked about it, and I, I yelled, like, let's calm it down, we then went through it, we played it correctly, and we ended up winning. For sure, and a comment on that as well, uh, on the Villa game, the very first game, you guys ended up winning the first two attack rounds, I believe, and then ended up losing everything after that. So what was the game plan going into map two, or not into map two, into the second half to stop that momentum from Whitewater? Well, we like to control the momentum of the game, and they gave us full ride of controlling it for the first two rounds. And then they kind of just like, I don't know, played really weirdly. They just kind of like were really aggressive on angles and... It felt weird, and it, it just didn't feel like, you know, even a match in general. It just felt like kind of like a, a ranked game, how they were playing. So we just ended up, we, we then just, you know, settled it down, and we went and we just 
went into it with an open mindset on the second half and we just played together while also tr- controlling the pace of the round. Because we figured when we started controlling the pace, we were winning the rounds pretty easily. Yeah, dominant dominant, and uh, setting the pace indeed. You guys had so many round wins on the defense and like the defense was basically just like a no show from UWW side. Uh how did you, how did you guys feel about the uh the 5-1 split? You said that um you said that it shouldn't have been as close as you said and obviously that was shown on the second map, but uh how did you guys feel about that 5-1? Uh, we were, I mean, I think it, we, in all honesty, it probably 6-0 would have been more like what we were going for. We kind of just, we threw a lot in that, like, that one round we lost. Like, I think Arf played really aggressive and died, and then, like, or I, I think that round ended in a 1v1 between K, uh, Jet and somebody, or I don't remember what happened there, honestly. We just, we started playing too aggressive. It's, it's a, it's an issue that we have if we, uh, don't do, like, warm-ups or we don't, like, really talk too much before. We just end up playing a little too aggressive, and it sometimes bites us, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. In general, I think they they played extremely well. Uh, my hats off to UWW. They played a lot better than I was honestly expecting them to play. They're they're a good team. Don't get me wrong, but they they were going crazy, especially in map one. Yeah, and um, and those uh, and I uh, I especially saw that every single defensive round you switched onto a different operator specific for this site. Was there any was there any backwards uh, was there any thought process around that? They banned my Maluzi, which, as everybody knows, Maluzi's my champion. So I just only play her. And so I was just kind of going whatever I was feeling. Like, we, we pretty much have the core uh, site always is, like, our Serma and a little bit of Casey in there. And then the two roamers are me and Jet. But we have Jet on Jaeger duty, so he never moves. And uh, I just play whatever's needed. So, if, like, if we need, like, a, I don't know, like, cams or if I want to play cams or whatever roaming works. I Like, I, I control your pace against these guys is... They were droning really well. They were playing really smart. So I just played a lot of mute and I played a lot of uh, Mozzie to counteract their uh, droning. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm all at questions, Ben. Do you have any for for uh, I'm at here? Um, I'm all at questions as well, really. So thank you for the interview as well, and best of luck into round eight next week. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, no problem. And then uh, thank you everybody for watching, and stay tuned for the next couple games coming up. in the sky gazing far into the night i raise my hand to the fire but it's no use because you can't stop it from shining through it's true baby let the light shine through if you believe it's true baby won't you let the light
into the night I raise my hand to the fire But it's no use Cause you can't stop it from shining through It's true Baby, let the light shine through If you believe it's true Baby, won't you let the light shine through 